Hi, I'm gonna uh, speak about tares and the wheat, sheep and goats, and why it's so important. It happened to me that when I started exposing false prophets and I started speaking about them in my church, in the group um, of Christians, I was called a witch and jealous person. Uh, so I was led by the Lord uh, to make this video where I'm going to give uh, scriptures and I'm going to explain something that is so, that what is going on right now in the church. So as we look at this photo, we see the wheat and we see the tears. And before they are fully ripe, you can see that they almost look identical. So next we, we go to the parable of tears. So we know all the parable that when the man slept, um, enemy came and so tears among the wheat and he went his way so you know when the blade was sprung up and brought forth the fruit then appeared the tears also this is kgv version so we see that when the wheat started appearing the tears appeared as well so the servants of the householder came and said to him sir how, how can it be we saw we sown good seed in the field. How, what are the tares are doing there? So the man said, an enemy hath done this. So the servant says, okay, let's go and approve them. And uh, the man said, no, you cannot do that because if you're going to do that, when they're young, you will approve and, and you know, well, you're going to be approving the tares and the wheat will be uprooted as well. So let's, let's wait until the harvest comes and then it, they will be separated. So, and if you can see that, the tears are gonna be thrown in the fire. Anyway, next thing we see. So what means wheat and tears? We know that wheat is a good seed that gives plentiful harvest. These are real people, servants of God that they are filled with Holy Spirit and they bear fruit. So what means tares? Tares are people sown by the enemy in the church, in the body of Christ. So let's go to the original meaning of tares to understand why Jesus spoke, why uh, he brought exactly that parable, why did he did not speak about any other grass, any other wheat, why it had to be wheat and tares. Look at that. It is written, it is difficult to tell the difference between the two. In fact, before wheat produces fruit, the tares look identical to wheat. So we can see now this is what is going on in the church. People cannot see the difference between false prophets and the real prophets, between false servants of God and the real servants of God. It is very difficult until you see you know, the fruit, the whole fruit of the ministry. So listen to that. In the spring, wheat and tares grow together, but the tares, they grow faster. And this is what we see sometimes, that false prophets and false ministries, they have more popularity. They're more popular. They have more followers than real people of God. Why? Because the enemy does not find them. Because the enemy actually is helping them to grow but it is written that tears their branches they're preventing the wheat from growing and ripening so as we can see they look identical before they produce fruits you can't tell the difference that's why the bible says in Matthew 7 15 verse 15 to 20 you will know them by their fruits and look what it says beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. So they will look like sheep. They will speak about Jesus, about their love for Jesus, about their love for the body of Christ, but they will be wolves. So let's go next. When people are filled with Holy Spirit, they, uh, they will have the fruits of the Spirit. But when they are not filled with the Spirit of God, their fruits are the fruits of flesh. So no matter how spiritual they think they are, 
even if they are wizards and warlocks and witches, you know that witches are operating in the spirit, in the spiritual realm. They have ability to astral project and even turn into spiritual animals or any other spiritual beings. So they operate in the spirit, but still they are in the flesh. Because if you see Galantians, Galantians, Galantian, Galantians, sorry uh, for my English, 5, 19, verse 21 says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, and many other things. So look, and one of them, it says witchcraft, idolatry, witchcraft. Okay, next one. So next thing, it says that tears and wheat look identical before the harvest. So we need to be aware of the fact that it is very difficult to see the difference, as I already said. Next thing, it says that tears grow faster. Again, I, I already spoke about it. So when we see the false ministry goes fast, it is not an indicator that God is there. We see that false prophets indeed grow faster than real servants of God. Enemy is promoting them. Enemy does not oppress them. Enemy doesn't fight them. Enemy doesn't fight their finances. When Jesus met with the Satan, Satan showed the, when Jesus was in the wilderness, going through temptations, Satan said, I'm going to give you the whole world if you bow down to me. So surely the false ones, because they are from the enemy, they will grow. Next thing we see, it says, tears are preventing the wheat from growing and ripening. So let's go to Matthew 23, especially verse 23. Uh, I advise everyone, to everybody to read when Matthew 23, but verse 13 is very important. Look what it says. Woo unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. So you, ni you neither go there. For you neither go in yourselves. Neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. So you do not go yourself. And you are preventing others from growing. And this is what the tears do in the physical, real, um, real grass, real wheat. They are preventing the wheat from growing and ripening. Next one. Matthew 15, uh, verse 13 and 14 says that they are blind guides. This, this is Jesus speaking. Jesus said, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. In Matthew, Jesus said that not only they block themselves from entering, they do not allow others to enter, and they lead them into the ditch. So when somebody says, uh, there are a lot of people who say, if you see he's preaching Jesus, even if he's false, you cannot stop them. You shouldn't stop them. And they bring the scripture where Jesus said, uh, do not stop them. So whosoever is not against me, it's okay. Don't stop them. But it is against God. And I will, and I will tell you why. Why they must be stopped. A lot of, as I said, a lot of people, yes, they bring that scripture. But that's the one. Uh, just a second. Look, uh, in, in Luke, look. And Jesus said unto them, Forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for us. So yes, God does not forbid people who are not even in Christ to preach the gospel. But only if they preach the truth and the real thing. So Jesus said, who is not against us? But those, um, like those who do not lie, those who do not lead people to hell, they are not against God. But if you watch false prophets, most of them preach abundant grace instead of holy life in repentance. And this is against God. God hates the sin. So if the person who is not in Christ... He decides to preach just for money, for the fame, whatever his reason is, is not, you know, he doesn't have the heart toward Jesus. He doesn't care. But as long as he speaks the truth, he's just preaching what is written. We should not stop them. Whosoever is preaching forgiveness 
abundant grace without repentance is against God. The Bible says, be holy for I am holy. Okay, let's go to the next one. Let's see more what are the tears again. They are called the poisonous weeds. In Greek, they are called zizania, which means poisonous weed in Latin. Look, in Latin, interestingly, metaphorically, they are used as words of jealousy and discord. In the Latin language, again, the tares, they symbolize not only the wheat, the real grass. They were also used to describe jealousy and to describe discord. And this is what is going on, discord right now. The church is separated. People are attacking each other. They're attacking uh, real prophets, they're attacking false prophets, there is confusion. This one is real, this one is not. You see what is going on? Look, they are also called darno. Darno, which means false wheat. <laughs> so they are false. It's, it's amazing if we go to the uh, real physical understanding of what is the tear, where it came from. The original meaning, it's like things become more obvious. Here you can see toxic tears, poisonous weeds, zizania in Greek. Yes, in Latin, tears, darno, discord, jealousy, discord. Uh -huh, it's interesting. Look, look, look what it says. Can tears be eaten? As one would anticipate, the effects of, on humans are not dissimilar. Tears are usually not taken in sufficient amount to be fatal to humans, but depending on the amount ingested, they are associated with a broad spectrum of negative effects. So in physical, in real life, if you eat tear, and if you eat a lot, it can cause you real food poisoning. So not only they, they, turn, they do not allow the wheat to grow, but also they can be poisonous for health of a person. And indeed, we look that false prophets, false teachers, they are very poisonous to the church and the body of Christ. So let's look at another description from biological view. Tears grow among the grain, particularly wheat. They do not grow separate. Tears do not grow separate. It's crazy. They're always among the wheat in the natural. And this is what's going on. If you see the false prophets, they try also to be friends with the real people of God. They try to be connected to real churches, to real servants, to real prophets. Yep. Um, you see, it says, lolium temulentum, the bi biological meaning of tares. And it says, wheat which grows among the grain, particularly the wheat. Okay, next one. This is, uh, uh, this is method of separating. It says, <laughs> it involves, it's called winnowing. And it will, involves tossing the mixture of wheat and tears into the air, allowing the wind to blow away the lighter chaff and tears while the heavier wheat grains fall back down. So you see there, they are like dust tears, the lighter, and then they're just blown away. Like you throw them in the air, they're gone. The wheat stays and they're gone. So let's go. Next one. It is very hard to separate them from the wheat. Oh, sorry for mistake. In order to do that, we need to know how to locate them and how to see them. We must remember they are hypocrites, liars, pretenders. Bible says, the enemy comes to kill, to steal, to destroy. So number one is the Holy Spirit. You need to listen to the voice of Holy Spirit. We also need wisdom and discernment. All these things you can ask from God. The Bible says in James, I believe, 
Yes, it's James. And it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, ask God and it shall be given liberally. So you don't really even need, you know, um, let me check. You don't really need to fast for it. You don't really need it's yes, James of uh, chapter one, verse five. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, which gives it to all men liberally. So it's like it is the will of God to give you wisdom. Just ask for it. We have to see what they teach, what they preach. Sometimes, yes, we might not have enough discernment, we might not have enough wisdom. So how do you know if the person is false a person is false? You if you want to follow him, you need to see his fruits. You need to see what he's teaching. And we need to know the Bible. Unless you know the Bible, unless you know the word of God, it is almost, almost impossible to see the lies. How can you see the lies if you don't have the truth, if you don't have the knowledge of truth? Next way, next thing. Tears are not just people, but also their false doctrines. Wit and tears can be called truth and lies. So do not think that they will be telling you lies at all times. Remember, they look the same. So most probably in 90 cases, they might tell you the truth. Yes, they will come and they will preach in Bible. They will be preaching the word of God. So they will take the wheat, the true knowledge of God, and they will plant their tears in that knowledge and it will be so similar so identical that you might not see the difference um let's go next one we can look at it from the other side when they are young they're almost identical right so when you are fresh you are a fresh baby christian you're not rooted in the bible and you do not have a deep knowledge most probably you will be deceived the only way wheat and tears are separated and you can see obviously, you know, the difference is when they mature and when you mature. So we should desire to have more knowledge of God. We should study Bible more and more. Every time you have free time, you need to study. You need to become mature in Christ. You cannot, uh, like the Bible says, you cannot keep drinking spiritual milk. You need to eat Meat, spiritual meat, is a deeper, deeper knowledge, a deeper understanding. So next thing, what we do with them? Let's go to the Bible, what the Bible says about them. Um, let's go to Luke. It says, it's uh, chapter 6, verse 26. Who unto you, when all men shall speak well of you. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. The story, the history repeats itself. Before people were speaking good things about false prophets and Jesus says woo to those who speak good about false prophets. God doesn't want us to speak good of them. Yes, we need to love our enemies. We should bless them. We should pray for them. But we cannot follow them and we cannot tell them that they are good and the teachings are good. Next one. Um, look at Titus chapter 1 verse 11 to 13. The Bible says to rebuke them sharply. Now let's go to verse 13. This witness is true. Uh, wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in faith. You can read it yourself. I'm not going to spend much time because already it's almost 20 minutes of the video. Not everybody uh, has so much time. I understand it. So I'm trying to go quickly. I'm going to give you the scriptures and you can go and check it for yourself. You can read, you know, for yourself to understand. Next one, we go to First Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 12, 20. Paul said that he delivered people to Satan so as they learn not to bless me. Sorry for mistakes sometimes, like my phone changes the words. Sorry, I apologize for some mistakes. So let's read it. Whom I have delivered unto Satan that they may learn not to blaspheme. 
when God does not speak to you, but you come out and you say, oh, God told me, this is blasphemy. And Paul, apostle, filled with the Holy Spirit, said this kind of people shall be delivered unto Satan. Meaning that when everything is good in your life, when you, for example, person is a liar, a hypocrite, and he does damage to other people. As long as he lives and enjoys his life and everything is perfect, that person will not come to repentance. We have to understand they will not repent. If he lives a luxury life, sickness doesn't touch him, troubles does, do not touch him, nothing touches him, he will not come to repentance. But if all the good things are taken away from him and something bad happens, then he will stop and say, I made a mistake somewhere, I went wrong, I angered God. This is very serious. Uh, okay, look at First Timothy, uh, first chapter, verse 18. It says, about, it speaks about a war, a good warfare. So we need to raise, we need to do warfare against them. Okay, we have to remember we're not uh, wrestling with flesh and blood, but the spirits that is, you know, operating in lives of these people. Okay, 1 Corinthians 5, uh, chapter 5, verse 3 to 5. Paul said he was present with them in the spirit and by the spirit, by the spirit of God, he judged already the sinner to deliver him unto Satan. This is to those who say, do not judge. Really? That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, do not judge somebody. For example, if somebody lives in sin and you live in the same sin and you say, oh, look at him and you do the same thing. Yes, you cannot judge. But if you do not live in that sin and you, peep, and you see the person is doing that deliberately, intentionally, he knows that he is a liar. He knows you know, he is bringing damage, he's doing damage, he doesn't care, he does it for his money, for the wealth, for whatever the reason is. The Bible says we have to judge them. Here, you can read it for yourself, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, from 3 to 5, the verses. Next one. Yes, we are not allowed to gossip. We are not uh, allowed to judge unbelievers. The Bible says we have to judge only those who are in the church, not outside the church, because those who are not in Christ, they do not have knowledge of Christ. They do not have knowledge of the truth, so we can judge them. Yes, we can pray for them. But those who, who, who preach the Bible, the false prophets, they know the Bible. They know the Bible better than many Christians, better than many real people of God. Okay, uh, Proverbs 22, verse 22, it says, He that says unto the wicked, Thou art righteous, like you are righteous, him shall the people curse. The proverb says, If you tell to a person who does evil that he is righteous, you shall be cursed. But to them that rebuke him shall be delight, and a good blessing shall come upon them. That's the word of God. That's what is written in the Bible. It is not me. Next one. Again, Proverbs. He that rebukes a man afterwards shall find more favor than he that flatters with the tongue. Okay, next one. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Next one. Okay, this one is First Timothy... First Timothy. Oh no, sorry. First Thessalonians. And it says, look, verse 14. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, epistle, not that man have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. We we're supposed to not have company with them. We're supposed to not, not have company with them. Next one, it says here, look verse 11, and have no fellowship 
with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Other translation says expose them. What? Yes, we have to expose. So uh, what we need to remember? Yes, we have to love our enemies. We have to pray for them. But we cannot wait till the enemy will bring destruction upon in, in, in our lives, in the church, in the body of Christ. So while we are praying for them, still we need to rebuke them. Paul spoke about good warfare. We need to target the powers that, they are, that are operating, you know, with those people. Our war is not against flesh and blood. When we think about that one person, for example, false prophets, we need to think about thousands of people that are deceived by him. And because of one person, those thousands can go to hell. Because of one person. So rebuke must be made, as well as prayers, and for the deceiver, and for deceived people. According to the Bible, if person refuses to stop and repent, we see that Paul gave the person to Satan. So biblically, we can ask God to give the person to Satan so as his soul will be saved. Again, warfare must be made. We can bind the powers that those false prophets are operating with. We can release confusion upon them and the false prophet. Ask God to confuse him so as he will expose himself by, you know, his obvious false teachings. And what I'm saying, I am not speaking about character of people. I am trying to give understanding of the spirits that that are using those people. I'm trying to give understanding. I don't want anyone to curse them. But we have to rebuke them. We have to speak against false teachings. If someone is telling you, do not repent, the grace is sufficient. Oh yes, grace is sufficient, but, the, but Jesus said you need to repent. And something bad happens to the person. Tomorrow the person dies. He will go to hell. Unrepented. Unrepented people, they go to hell. So when we feel sorry for false prophets, we have to feel sorry for those who are deceived. So you see, as we study the Bible, we see that Paul was not tolerating false teachers and prophets. We cannot tolerate lies and agree with them. Jesus himself did not tolerate them. As we read Matthew 23, he was calling them liars, hypocrites, and blind people. And he hasn't seen. So we need uh, discernment to understand who exactly the person is. Whether he is deceived himself or he does it intentionally. Also, there are people who are false prophets, teachers, but they are deceived. There are people who do that intentionally. They know exactly what they're doing. They're involved in witchcraft, sorcery, and they know. And there are people who want to serve God, but they are so, so deceived that like, they don't know what they are. The thing that they think that things that they do are right, but they are wrong, but they are just deceived. So we have to have discernment and wisdom to understand. And if the person is deceived, we need to address the issue privately. We can address it privately. Like the Bible says, we can talk to a person first, but if the person refuses to repent and keeps teaching false doctrine, then we have to go publicly about it. But still, that person, you know, it can be a victim. So we can ask the Lord to open the eyes of that person. We can take even a fast for that person. Yes, we can do fasting for other people. So as God will, will deliver the person from deception. And as that person repents and confesses, all his audience, all those thousands of people who are deceived, you know, they will know the truth. Know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Look at Matthew, Matthew 18 verse 6. Look, Jesus said, whoever welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me. We are children of God. 
But if anyone causes one of these little ones to, who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him to have a large millstone or milestone, I think it's milestone hung around his neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. This is Jesus speaking. A false teacher, a false prophet does it intentionally and makes people stumble and put people in sin. Jesus said it would be better for him to be hung in the depth and you know or, or to be drowned in the depths of the sea. So we cannot lead other people to sin, and we must rebuke those who do that. These are some more verses. Proverbs, whoso causes the righteous to go astray in an evil way, he shall fall himself into his own pit, but the upright shall have good things in possession. Next one. Who Isaiah, this is Isaiah. Who unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Isn't it what's going on in the church with some prophets? And it's going back to description of tears. It is written, it is called poisonous weed. So when we take a little drop of poison and put it in the cup of water, the whole water becomes poison. Also, as we read about lolium temulentum, it is called, you know, it is, it, that's how it's called. It is written that it can be infected with fungus. So not only it is poisonous by itself, but it can infect, it can be infected with a disease and it can put this disease, you know, spread it around them. They carry diseases. Interestingly, wheat does not carry diseases, but tears, they carry diseases. And it speaks about fungus. Fungus also called yeast. And in Matthew 16, verse 6, look what Jesus said. said, be careful. Be on your guard against the yeast of Pharisees and Sadducees. So we know from parable of Matthew 13, verse 33, that little portion of yeast works through the whole dove. So one false teaching can bring a lot of troubles in the church. It's like a poison that we, you know, will grow into something big. We know that Jesus was rebuking those who were teaching false doctrines. He was rebuking Pharisees and Sadducees. So who we are not to do the same. Jesus told us to do the same works as he did. And one of them is to speak the truth. Now, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verse 3, speaks about itchy ears. Let's read it. Oh. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. We live in pre times, in generation of itchy ears. The Bible says that people will turn away their ears from sound doctrines from the truth and they will listen to lies it's called generation of itchy ears a lot of people prefer to go to church where they tell you that you don't need to repent where they tell you that you will be rich and successful and we see now that most of the false prophets live a very wealthy life they are very wealthy they're rich Next day, we go to Matthew 21, verse 12. We can see that Jesus got angry with those who turned the church into a marketplace. And he called that place a den of thieves. So basically, you know, he called those people thieves. And said unto them, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And he did not see him in that. He got angry, but it was not a sin. So he called them den of thieves, and it was not a sin. So we should not be afraid to call them, to call them out, to call them for who they are, as Jesus did. So these are the teachings. I pray God will give you wisdom, knowledge, understanding. 
I pray that you will not be deceived. And whatsoever you do not understand, you need to take it to the Lord. We live in a very dangerous times. Enemy is willing to use anyone against you. Enemy is, is, is using people. He's, I have no words to describe what is going on in the church. Witchcrafts, sorcery, lies, deception, itchy ears, and etc. There is a lot of evil that is going on and God is separating wheat from tares. That's why I felt led to do this teaching because God is separating wheat from tares. The Bible says, I need to find that scripture, that God, uh, I think it's, it's, it's in Hebrews. Yes, it's Hebrews. Yeah, it's Hebrews. Look, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 9. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above all thy fellows. We're supposed to hate lies. We're supposed to hate iniquity. We're supposed to hate wickedness and sin. We need to live a righteous life and we serve the God of truth. So we're supposed to speak the truth and rebuke those who lie. So God bless everyone. And my apology for my English. English is not my native language. I hope you understand what I was preaching, what I tried to explain, the knowledge that I, the knowledge that I tried to give. God bless. Bye-bye.